Hi, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Neha and today in this video, I am going to discuss various examples of green chemistry. So let us see what people are doing using green chemistry. There are many research going on. Uh, the first one is uh, people are working on reducing the lead pollution because uh, tetraethyl lead uh, is a very toxic additive, right? Then people are finding out, putting out fires the green way that means fire fighting foams the chemical which is used in fire fighting foam uh, it has a very uh, it discharge very toxic substance into the environment and it contaminates the water it depletes the ozone layer so there is a new foam called pyrocol which has now been invented uh, which put out fire and without producing any toxic substances then we have reached to safer dry cleaning as you all know that in dry cleaning perk is the solvent which is used per chloroethylene which is carcinogenic it causes cancer etc so now supercritical co2 can be used as a safer solvent coming to nike has adopted green chemistry in various operations they have developed a technology to generate waste from outside molds and they have substituted water-based solvents and adhesives primers etc they have substituted nike air which contains sulfur hexafluoride which is a harmless gas uh, they have replaced it with a harmless gas Polymer industry is also working on it. In fact, polycarbonate lexin, which we see, uh, which is used widely in cars, appliances, making CDs and DVDs, uh, which we term it as engineering plastic also, which is having very good property. Uh, the uh, Japan industry have developed a new process for its manufacturing. And now the process is comparatively greener as they have eliminated the use of methylene chloride and they have reduced the CO2 emission by 173 tons per thousand tons of the polycarbonate produced similarly there are other two companies cargill and dewpoint which are producing biodegradable polymers with the name of nature works and sorona coming to the buildings that clean themselves nowadays uh, building facets uh, facades have been painted with lotusin uh, which is basically a, a solution which is inspired from the lotus leaf as you all know lotus flower uh, is uh, that having extremely water repellent proper property and self-cleaning property so when uh, the water is uh, put on the leaf the water immediately form droplets and it rolls off uh, from the lotus leaf carrying away the dust particle and the dirt particle with the same funda now there are buildings available that can clean themselves also it resists the growth of mold or mildew on the uh, facade so that's also a good point based on that stain resistant fabrics and stain repellent water bottles are also there in the market similarly with respect to that a nasa also have in, uh, got inspired from this uh, lotus property and they have uh, made a coating which is made up of silica zinc oxide and other oxides uh, which is used to clean the windows now uh, they are testing uh, the particular coating uh, for the windows uh, so that you know extreme temperatures and uv radiation solar wind etc can be sustained by that also and they are changing the uh, coating like they want to apply it to space suits also because uh, the coating which is developed there uh, is used to protect moving part of the spaceship which is needs to be extremely durable to resist wear and tear so that also is a problem and that is why they are applying uh, trying to apply it to their space suit also at the same time they are facing the problem of biocide right uh, because uh, they want to remove the dust that has been done by this but at the same time they want to remove the bacteria also that thrive on uh, that particular space suit so they are looking for a biocide uh, so that uh, they can uh, apply the same biocide infused coating on the lender so that it prevents the earthborne bacteria to contaminate the surface of an extraterrestrial object. So that's also quite interesting that uh, now uh, the problem of dust which is prevalent on the lunar surface can be uh, addressed by this type of lotus coating. Coming to the next one, in fact, Swarm Logic uh, from Encycle they have used is a unique algorithm that allows the power consuming appliances to communicate with each other and save energy. Actually, all in all major buildings, uh, they are the biggest energy consumer because uh, in those types of building, the equipments usually operate in isolation from each other. So they don't obey a single timer. They don't have any knowledge of what other uh, instrument is using. 
is currently operating or not and that is why it increases the energy and the cost so this innovation is energy efficient technology that integrates with the building control and it reduces the electric cost so basically they have developed a mesh wireless network uh, for the power consuming appliances and that's how they are able to communicate with each other so if one appliance is uh, not in a uh, use using this peak demand shaving approach uh, the algorithm approach uh, it will consume less of the energy and the other where uh, it is working that will consume more of the energy and that is how the load will be transferred Transferred. So they are actually inspired by the honeybees, how they communicate with one another and they coordinate uh, their behaviors. So that is, uh, is one example of green chemistry. Coming to the next one is a heat and serve thermal paper which bypasses bisphenol A. As you know that in this type of traditional uh, thermal paper a colorless dye and a chemical developer called bisphenol is coated. So when you heat this bisphenol actually protonates the dye and due to which it changes the color and you are able to see. But the problem with this chemical is it is estrogen mimic. So it mimics and that's a problem uh, while uh, if human use it for daily right. So uh, dough chemical and paper maker cola they have jointly uh, made this technology in which they are using a polymer in fact a resin you can say their name is ropax styrene acrylic uh, resin they coat it on the paper and how does it work uh, basically this uh, is having uh, like if you can see here the thermal printed is there when the thermal printed heats this paper there is a coating of uh, carbon black here and opaque layer is there so this air voids actually collapse and they become transparent and then they reveal the color which is just below uh, that of the uh, air void right so there is no need of chemical developer and using this technology they are actually uh, is amazing innovation which is uh, made to be benign by design by thinking out of box so that's uh, innovation coming to green electronics uh, we know that we buy electronics we and throw away each other and each year and uh, we are contributing to e-waste so green electronic is a major demand right now if uh, you know building a micro circuit takes around 800 to 1000 steps and that requires potentially toxic chemicals like xylene, mercury, sulfuric acid, etc. And manufacture of a single laptop consumes around 30 to 100 liters of water and around 160 liter of fossil fuel. So the main uh, culprit is uh, related with the silicon micro circuit. So what uh, they are now people are using, they have tried to change their approach like Apple have uh, agreed that uh, their casting will no longer have uh, brominated flame retardant which is a problematic compound. Similarly green electrochemistry is also there which includes uh, bioelectrochemistry and improved process engineering. It covers all the areas related to batteries, capacitors, redox batteries, solar cell, uh, fuel cell etc. So uh, they use the sustainability approach and then uh, they work on it. Like uh, they use electrochemical waste minimization for recovery and recycling of various components. Yeah, they use uh, uh, this for separation and recycling of salts, removal of acid, gases, etc. Uh, examples of the techniques available are electrochemical ion exchange, electrohydrolysis, electrochemical membrane process, etc. Then there are better batteries available for the electrical grid. Uh, this is particularly an example of uni energy technologies. They have made a flow battery which is based on more efficient vanadium uh, chemistry. The battery converts electrical energy to chemical energy and vice versa. And within the flow battery electrode as the electrolyte are pumped throughout the set. So that reduces their size and the cost. So I'll skip as the key innovation for this new battery is replacing sulfate based electrolyte electrolyte with a chloride based electrolyte. Coming to the next one is a green paint uh, as we know that the paint uh, emits VOC which is volatile organic compound and that is harmful for us. Now there are paints which does not emit those VOCs so they are termed as a green paint. In fact, uh, it they does not have formaldehyde, which is a carcinogenic compound. Then there are alternatives for adhesives also, like Pure Bond uh, is there, which contains only soya protein. So it's bio uh, in nature. Then uh, some people like the, the innovation of mixture of soya oil and sugar have replaced the paint resin that has been uh, given the EPA Green Chemistry Award also. 
Uh, then comes the green plastics. So plastics we know are a major concern, uh, but green plastics are still there in the market. A new uh, PLA uh, polymers are available. Coming to green carpet tile backing, this also is a new concept. Uh, earlier carpets contained bitumen and PVC, and the problem with PVC is that it contains thallate, basically a plasticizer. So now uh, they have. Uh, uh, skipped this particular thing and they have used a greener approach coming to the benefits of it obviously uh, it uses less per less energy to produce uh, that carpet and it uh, weighs lesser than that of traditional carpet it contains recycled content and obviously it emits low voc Coming to improving paint performance while cutting cost, so uh, TiO2 is an important additive to paint which is normally used and it is very expensive. So replacing TiO2 with another uh, compound definitely is going to help and this is the polymer which has been developed by Doe Chemical which improves the function of TiO2 by coating it and uh, that is how uh, less amount of TiO2 is used and that's how the costs are cut down. In fact, if you'll see uh, here, they have written that the reduction of TiO2 through the use of this uh, polymer has reduced the carbon footprint of the paint by 22% and consumed 30% less water. So that's definitely green chemistry in action. Coming to bio pesticides for sugar cane, uh, uh, we all know that DDT was the pesticide which came into picture first and that was accumulating, that was persisting in the environment. So now there are bio pesticides which uh, provides a nutritional requirement. At the same time, they do not persist in the environment. They help in improving uh, the yield and better quality of the product. At the same time, uh, related to termite uh, control also, uh, they have uh, started a new type of uh, chemicals uh, like one is Confirm which is selective to control of caterpillar. How uh, does it work is written here. You may read this. Similarly, antifolins are also there. Uh, I have discussed this in my another video also which use uh, elements the use of TBTO that is a carcinogen. So yeah, uh, then coming to non-ionic surfactants, obviously uh, in the area of surfactants also people are working on finding out the new uh, alternatives. Similarly in propylene oxide process, uh, they, DOE and BSF have jointly developed a new route to make the propylene oxide and that route eliminate most of the waste. It reduces the water and energy use. So that's an innovative thing in a green process. Coming to... Uh, Reverse osmosis technology, we all know that it is a water purification technology and that also provides safe drinking uh, water. So that's also is a reverse osmosis technology. I'm just giving you a glimpse of all the examples. What you can do later on is uh, you can find out which type of principle is followed while making this particular product. So that will brush up your knowledge of all the 12 principles also. Coming to bio-based plasticizers, now the plasticizers which are used to make plastics, uh, they are also have become uh, bio-based and uh, phthalate-free plasticizer. Obviously, the benefits are the same. Coming to the bio-fabric, now who would imagine that the uh, fabric also, uh, you know, uh, consumes vast quantity of chemical fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides and all. In fact, um, uh, what we wear denim jeans, it's having typical indigo color, which is because of dye. Also, it requires large quantity of sodium hydrosulfide which is a problematic compound and that uh, because of that you have to wash and rinse it with water with gallons of water because you know you uh, have to remove this particular uh, chemical from the fabric because it is going to damage us right so in order to do that you have to rinse it with water now imagine how uh, not eco-friendly this process is so with such problems in mind nature work uh, have made some corn based NGO polymer uh, which is used to make fiber the problem is the fabric is made but when you iron it it melts so basically it's one time we are and with that uh, into notice uh, what get noni has done is they have made it as a bio wedding dress because what we assume is we don't repeat a wedding dress so it's okay if we wear it once and you know then we iron it and it is degraded 100 percent so that's a eco-friendly bio wedding dress a polymer called surani also has been used by them for that sometimes wooden look is also used in the 
particular fabric and also wood derived viscous like fabric made by austria based manufacturer is also using less corrosive solvents and all but still uh, i may say that the truly green and affordable clothes are a way of yet but yes people are working in fabric portion also coming to the next one is a cosmetics uh, yes uh, cosmetics like moisturizers and you know creams and solutions oils they all uh, are not normally plant derived ingredients uh, they do have a uh, lot many chemicals and which is not uh, healthy for our health and environment so one such project which ray marriott in uk have done they have used supercritical co2 uh, as a good solvent to extract paraffins from liquid uh, lipstick wax from waste wheat straw so that's that's a green uh, thing right i remember the principal safer solvent and auxiliary so this is the safer solvent another innovation is the use of enzymes uh, to build that ester which is used to make cosmetic ingredient which soften the skin another one is uh, they have in fact received green chemistry award also for this similarly uh, there are been concerns with uh, respect to uh, the particular quality but the people are working on it so in a nutshell green chemistry is scientifically sound cost effective at least towards a sustainable civilization so whatever you do to bring that is a part of a green chemistry so i think with that you have got a glimpse of so many areas where green chemistry is working and you will find the application so it's not only related with chemical but it's related it's an interdisciplinary field and it is related with each in every department so we together can work to make a sustainable civilization so i think with that if you have liked the content please hit like and if you are new to my channel please do subscribe thank you so much